Right, I'm gonna be throwing some drip catchers today and I uh, just thought I'd video the process and do a very quick explanation. I've done videos on these before, but just in case you haven't seen them, these are my drip catchers. Um, they are things that I put underneath any piece I think is likely to run when I fire them, such as this one, which had a very fluid glaze on, so it would run over the dots. Basically what they are is they're a flat disc with a raised center and the mug sits on the center. And the reason that the raised part is so useful is if I get that lined up so you can see, it gives clearance around the edge of the mug. Meaning that um, this had some drips that flowed, you know, we normally get it under the handle because there's that much more glaze there. Uh, but it flows down and it dripped off, just dangled. You can see that one's starting to bead. Those ones went a little bit too far. Now normally that would stick to the kiln shelf, um, but if you've got that kind of few mil of clearance there, it lets the drip form as a drip and then it's very easy to sand back, especially if you've got one of the uh, diamond core tools wheel attachment things, which I do. And you just literally set that going, hold it down for a couple of seconds, the bottom of your pot's now flat. And not stuck is the main thing. So using Hartley and Noble bats, they're particularly good because I just let these dry on there until they fall off. Using about, I guess that's 180, but it, you can use a variety of different weights to get different sizes for different pieces. Um, anything from sort of 50 grams will give you a very small one and you can make bolt large fruit bowl sized ones with significantly more clay but they're very easy to throw you're basically making a quick plate like that um, and it doesn't you don't need to be too precise about how centered it is either I mean obviously you want it workable but and then the way I do it is open up to the bat and just move that centre mass of clay out to make the raised foot. And this is the only part that you want to make sure is level, but at this point you can then be in contact with the bat and just shape that knowing that what you've got now is a perfectly level bit for the pot to sit on. And then I tick the edge up a little bit um, just to make it easier to get hold of it and slide it around while it's on the kiln shelf. But, um, you could do these in a higher fire clay than you, nor you normally use, especially if you're firing to cone 6. You can use a cone 10 porcelain um, I would recommend using uh, the same clay or a lighter clay than you um, throw in. So if you're using a really white clay, don't use a dark clay for these. Um, just because it can sort of, uh, the colour can transfer slightly if there's iron or or something that can become slightly volatile and affect things nearby. It will burn the bottom of your pot. I don't mean literally, I mean just kind of colour it in. Um, I generally use the same clay I throw in, just for convenience. It's a good thing to do with um, reclaim, rather than trying to get it back up to full workable state. I had a a nightmare once where my reclaim was contaminated not not drastically didn't really notice but none of the pieces were coming out quite right so I prefer to use it turn it into slip because that's kind of you're halfway there when you've got trimmings and um, recycle it into throwable clay but use it for things like this where it doesn't matter if it's not quite as good as the original clay. Um, generally you'll be fine, but um, beats making these out of brand new clay out of the bag. 
uh, and means you don't have to reclaim quite as well as you would otherwise. And just because I've got smaller ones, so this is this would be a smaller, I'd guess maybe 90 gram, something like that. And actually, I tend to use these more than um, the bigger ones just because I'm mostly firing mugs and you don't want anything that's got a footprint that much bigger than your mug because otherwise you're wasting kiln shelf space so Again, don't need to be precious with it. The only part that you really need to worry about is the bit that the mug's going to come into contact with. You want that to be smooth-ish, at the very least no kind of bits sticking up because um, they will dig into the mug and you want it to be flat because otherwise it will kind of push the mug towards warping. But other than that, you just take a couple of minutes, throw a bunch of them, you can reuse them. I don't bother kiln washing them, although you can if you want to, and that will extend the life if any drips do drip on them. Um, but yeah, they're quick and easy to throw, um, and I replace them every few months. They do wear out, they just the clay becomes kind of overfired and starts to blow, but um, yeah. Nice, fun little project and good practice for making plates.